In the last video we learned how to eliminate big if else if blocks and not directly instantiate new classes within other classes using simple factory method pattern. And it worked great as the first step to making our code more dry. But let's see why it doesn't solve the problem completely. Say we decided to open a McDonald's store in Russia. You may not know this, but McDonald's actually localizes their burgers based on the country and the burger ordered in Moscow would taste nothing like the one you may get in New York. Because of this we would have to duplicate the whole menu for each country in our code base and add even more logic to determine which burger was actually ordered. One solution is to pass in another argument to the create burger method in the burger factory and add even more if else if statements. I hope you can see how it's already looking bad, error prone and doesn't give us confidence that we'll be able to maintain this in the future. Another option is to make this burger factory an interface or an abstract class class and create two more factories, US Burger Factory and Russian Burger Factory, and then replicate the burger creation code there. This actually looks a bit better than the first approach. And honestly, I would be fine just doing that, because why complicate things? But since we're talking about the factory method pattern today, let's see how we can apply it to this problem. And again, I know you don't care, but let's first look at the diagram to make sure we understand what we're about to do. We have a product interface with a common method. We are using an interface for two reasons. First, relying on concrete implementation is bad. Second, using an interface will allow us to swap between implementation. So we have concrete product A and concrete product B that implement this interface. Obviously there could be a bunch more of them. Then we have a creator abstract class. Just a reminder, an abstract class allows us to implement some common functionality but ensures that certain methods are implemented by the classes that inherit from it. So we can implement the do something method right in this creator class. Class, but the create product class will have to be implemented by each of the children of this class. Also, I didn't show it in the diagram, but we return a product interface from the create product method, not a concrete product implementation. Okay, this all was pretty abstract. Now let's plug in things from our problem into this diagram and see if we can understand this better. Our product interface is going to be just burger. It will have two methods, prepare and wrap. They will need to be implemented by the classes that want to implement this interface. Now we can have the US be Big Mac Burger, Russian Big Mac Burger and other types of burgers that implement this interface. Our creator abstract class is going to be the McDonald's store. The do something method in it is going to be our order burger method and the create product method is going to be the create burger method that we already have. And finally our concrete creators will be the US McDonald's store and Russian McDonald's store. Each of which will implement the McDonald's store abstract class and its create burger method. Now let's go and code this thing. First we'll create the burger interface. Then we'll create a bunch of burgers that implement this interface. To make it easier, we'll just print something in both prepare and wrap methods for all of them. They all will look very similar, so I'm going to fast forward this part. With that, we've got our products done. Now let's look at the creator part. We're going to remove the constructor from the McDonald's store and the burger factory from our code and add the create burger method that throws a not implemented exception, letting classes that inherit it know that they better have this method implemented. In the order burger method, we replace the call to the factory to create the burger with the call to its own create burger method. And finally we create the US McDonald's store and make sure it implements the create burger method. And we do the same thing for the Russian McDonald's store. Now let's test our program. We will instantiate both the US and the Russian store and try to order the burger with the same name from both of them. And as you can see, it looks like our program worked correctly. The beauty of this pattern is that if we need to change how the order is created at one particular location, we only need to change the code for that particular location without touching other classes. And since it's a franchise where we want to control certain processes, we can still have the code with some common functionality shared between in the location. Now the challenge for you is to add your own French McDonald's store and see how easy it was to edit and count the number of times you had to modify the existing code. And if you want to share this number with me, just leave it in the comment. To learn how we can implement the code for our burger ingredients, click on the next video to learn about the abstract factory pattern.